So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about the basic tools that you can use in Stata and really what you can do with the program uh, to manipulate different variables, data, statistical tests, um, using different data that you've collected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, how you open a log, which keeps track of all the uh, inputs and codes that you put into Stata. Uh, how you open a data set, which often contains the subjects and the results and the data from the different samples that you've collected how you tabulate data, which is basically getting an overview of what actually the data consists of, how you generate new variables using existing variables or new code, how you recode some of these variables uh, depending on how you want to use them, and how you summarize these variables, um, which is going to really consist of looking at the mean, the min, the max, the standard deviation, some basic statistical readings off of the data. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how you create tables and graphs using these data, as well as how you can run tests using this data. Um, so with that, you want to start up Stata. So once we've opened up Stata, you're going to want to do to start a log, begin, and we're going to use the LOG format, um, and we're just going to do that because what it can really do for you is you can open it in text or Word or whatever uh, program you are using as your primary uh, reading software. And I'm just going to call this uh, test log for purposes of this tutorial and so now we've opened up our log and you can see that it's starting to keep track right here of everything we're typing in so I'm gonna go ahead and open now uh, my data set so I'm gonna use the NLSY08 data and again as you can see it's it's started keeping track of uh, what we've been doing we just opened an NLSY data set and over here on the left, you can see a lot of the codes, the different variables that we have data for, a brief description um, of the data, so a label of what it actually represents. And up here, it's starting to keep track along with what's down here of the different commands that we've entered. So I'm going to start this off by uh, tabulating some data. So I want to look at 08. And what this represents is the year that an uh, individual or respondent left high school. So um, we open it up and we can see that in se uh, second grade we had one leave second grade, we had two leave fifth grade, and down here at twelfth grade we had 6,536 respondents leave in twelfth grade. Um, and as you can see here we have a percent of uh, the entire sample that, that responded according to this response, and we can see a cumulative response here. What we also have though is valid skip, invalid skip, and ungraded and that's not really going to help us with our testing because those don't actually represent anything. So what we can do to eliminate that is we can go ahead and tab this variable with no label and what that's going to do is see how they coded it. And we see here that uh, the skips were negative 4, negative 3 and then ungraded was 95. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and how we do that is we put in the command recode then we're going to want to put in the variable's name itself, and then we're going to open up some parentheses and say we want to recode negative 4 as missing, which is represented by a period. We want to recode negative 3 as missing, and we want to recode the ungraded, which is represented by the 95, also as missing. And if we retab the variable, we can see that we only have respondents from 2nd grade to 12th grade we've decreased from 8,984 respondents to 8,634, which can be represented by the 350 changes made. Um, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to summarize this data. So let's say sum and then the variable's name. And we see here the number of the observations, the mean of the observations, the standard deviation, the min, and the max. So that will just give you some basic statistical information and references for this variable. Now say that we want to generate a new variable based on this one. So let's say I want to look at high school grad. Okay, Then I'm going to say that that variable equals the old variable that we were working with. Okay, So now when we open that up, we still have the 2nd through 12th grade. We still have the 8,634 respondents and we have our new variable that we can kind of mess with a little bit. So I want to look at only those who have graduated versus those who have not graduated from high school. So what I'm going to want to do is recode high school grad and I'm going to say that anything from 2 to 11, which you can use using a backslash, 
equals zero. They did not graduate from high school. And then 12 equals one, which is saying that the people who completed 12th grade, 6,536 respondents, did. There was a positive response, so they did graduate. And that's going to recode all my data. And if I retab high school grad, now I only have zero and one as the different uh, codes. And this can be helpful in comparing how many students dropped out versus how many respondents did not drop out of high school. And what we can do from that now is we can start to use it as a proportion. Um, if I want to summarize high school grad, I'll see that the mean is 0.757 and the standard deviation, the min and the max. And what this mean means is about 75% of the students, 76%, um, actually graduated. Now if I want to look at a different variable, let's say I want to tab um, gangs. Okay, I see the non-interview skips, the don't know, uh, the refuse, the no's, and the yeses. And again, I kind of want to get rid of some of these um, just because they don't really make sense as far as the coding. So if I do the tab gangs 02, no label, I'm going to see how they coded it. And I'm going to say recode gangs 02. And I'm going to code everything from negative 5 all the way to negative 1. And be careful here, you want to put the, the lower bound first and the upper bound second. And because these are negative, the negative 5 is going to be below the negative 1. And I'm going to recode those as missing. So again, when I tap gangs 02, all I have left is the no's and the yeses. So after making the gang 02 variable what I want it to be, I can start to compare this variable to other ones. So let's say that I want to make a table of those who dropped out of high school um, and the various grade levels that they dropped out. And I want to compare that to the mean gangs 02 variable. What that's going to show me is because gangs is a bi is a bi binary variable, I can start to compare what percentage of individual respondents actually joined gangs after leaving dropping out of high school. And so what I see here is in sixth grade, there was 0 0.05 uh, were, in, were in gangs. Then those who dropped out of ninth grade was about 0.19 joined gangs. Uh, 11th grade was 0.22. And you can see that those who graduated 12th grade, uh, it was only 0 0.1, about 0 0.14. Um, so we start to see some trends. And now if I want to explore that a little bit further, what I can do is I can actually make a, gr a bar graph. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say graph, and it's going to be a bar graph, gangs, O2 variable, over the high school left variable. And let's say that I want to give it a title of dropouts and gangs. And once I do that, you're going to start to see it's going to process the input and we're going to get our bar graph so what you can see here is that once those who dropped out of the, as the grades went up you start to see an increase in the number of gangs and then it drops and then it kind of it, you see the trends over time um, for those who dropped out um, another thing that we can do with this is we can compare it to um, just directly the high school grads and those who did not graduate from high school so if I want to do that, what I can look at is I can create a graph bar gangs02 again because that's going to be our y variable over high school grad. And I'm going to want to title this one high school grad and gangs. And so when I go ahead and make that one, you see that those who didn't graduate high school had a higher uh, gang rate than those who uh, actually graduated high school. And we can do this statistically as well by doing a PR test. So if I want to look at gangs 02 by high school grad, you're going to create the PR test. And what this is going to show you is the mean for both. So for those who did not graduate from high school, you see a mean of 0.2, about 0.22. And for those who did graduate from high school, you're going to see a mean of about 0.14. Um, as far as joining gangs in the future. We have our standard error. Uh, we have our confidence interval for these different um, for the different means and variables. And we can see our p-score. So what we see here is we see a z-score of 8, which is pretty significant. Um, and then if you want to look at the p-score for that, we're looking at the point zero 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 zero. So what we can say is that it's significant at uh, very conservative levels. What that means is that those who graduate from high school have a significant difference as far as joining gangs in the future from those who did not graduate from high school. And that's really important as far as the policy implications 
um, if we want to start implementing programs that promote students graduating from high school, um, we can really focus on uh, the, that kind of policy. Uh, and if we, if we want to decrease the rate that respondents and students join gangs. And with that said, uh, we've used Stata now to analyze different variables, to summarize the different variables, and to test our different variables so we can make some statistical significance and interpret some, uh, some ideas from these various tests. So from that you can draw conclusions and Stata has just been a really helpful tool. Um, what you do now is if you want to close your log, you go here and you say log, and you can say close, because we've already opened it. Now this will be saved in that file that we uh, discussed earlier, which was for this one was the test log. You can open it on your computer and you're going to have all the, the inputs that you put um, from this entire log over area over here. If for some reason you wanted to enter or re-enter one of the commands you previously did, you can come over to this left bar over here, this left box, and I can re-click on one of them. So I can say, say I want to re-look at this uh, graph. I can come here, click on that, and re-enter it. I have my graph once more. And um, that's pretty much it. You can, re you can reference what you did. Um, and you can go ahead and start writing your policy briefs because you have all the data you needed. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed the presentation, and best of luck.